and welcome to John Sports and welcome to another episode of Swindon and its Railways. This is the fifth part. We've looked at uh, the railway works, the railway village. We've looked at uh, the railway lines. And in the next two episodes, we're going to look at Swindon's railway stations. Right now, only one is operational fully. Uh, there's an operational one on the Heritage Line. But today we're going to look at the two stations that made up Swindon's history, namely Swindon Town and Swindon Junction until 1961, which is now Swindon. This is Swindon. Uh, Swindon is on the GWR line, is the older of the two stations. Um, right now, uh, as I mentioned, it's the only one which is operational so uh, we're going to look at videos photos and um, there'll be my commentary about the station's histories uh, their importance and the present day uh, so um, sit back and relax in your first class carriage and enjoy it here goes Station, formerly Swindon Junction Station until 1961, when Swindon Town Station closed, is on the Great Western Main Line. It is 77 miles down the line from the zero point at London Paddington and is situated between Didcot Parkway and Chippenham on the Main Line and is managed by Great Western Railway, which also operates all the trains. Being roughly halfway between the English and Welsh capitals of London and Cardiff, it is an important junction where the former GWR line to Gloucester and Cheltenham Spa, the main line to Bristol Temple Mees, and the South Wales main line via Bristol Parkway diverge. It is served by GWR services from Paddington to Bristol Temple Mees, Cheltenham Spa via Gloucester, Cardiff Central Swansea and the rest of South Wales, and to Westbury via Chippenham. Cheltenham and Great Western Union Railway had in 1836 been authorised to link the GWR with Gloucester and Cheltenham and for this line a junction at Swindon had been decided upon. The GWR line was planned by Zimbard Kingdom Brunel to rise from both London and Bristol to a summit near Swindon. Therefore Brunel and his colleague Daniel Gooch decided in 1840 in October that year that one locomotive would not be able to manage the whole distance without taking on fuel and it would be necessary to change locomotives part way. They felt that it would be convenient to change locomotives at Swindon besides Reading. Not only was this almost two thirds of the way and the, and the site of the junction for the Cheltenham line, it was also the summit of the line and the train from London could have its fast locomotives replaced by a slower but more powerful locomotive for the journey onto Bristol. Accordingly, it was necessary to provide locomotive maintenance facilities at Swindon. The proximity of the North Wilts Canal was also a factor since it would enable coke for the locomotives and coal for the workshops to be supplied from the Somerset Coalfield at a reasonable price. The GWR had engaged the Westminster firm of Messrs J and C Rigby to build several stations, including all of the buildings at Swindon, including the station and its refreshment rooms, the locomotive repair shops too, 300 houses and other buildings needed for the workers. The GWR was short of money and in late 1841 the contractors, instead of asking for payment, agreed to give Swindon Station and its refreshment rooms to the GWR free of charge and to lease back the refreshment rooms for 99 years at one old penny per year. Part of the deal was that all trains carrying passengers, not being goods trains or trains to be sent express or for special purposes, should pass the Swindon Station, either up or down, save in case of emergency or unusual delay arising from accidents, 
and stop there for refreshment of passengers for a reasonable period of about 10 minutes. In this reasonable period, not only could the passengers be refreshed, but the locomotive would also be changed. Messrs Rigby would then be able to use the profits from the refreshment rooms to recover their financial outlay. With the railway passing through the town in early 1841, the Goddard's Arms public house in Old Swindon was used as a railway booking office in lieu of the station. Tickets purchased included the fare for a horse-drawn carriage to the line at the bottom of the hill. The original building was demolished in 1972, with today's modern station and ghastly office block erected on the site. The travel office at Swindon was APTIS equipped by the end of October 1986, making it one of the first stations with the ticketing system, which was eventually found across the UK at all staff British Rail stations by the end of the 1980s. On the 2nd of June 2003, Platform 4 opened. Prior to this, all westbound trains had used Platform 3 and eastbound services, Platform 1. Services terminating or starting here on the lines to Westbury via Chippenham and Gloucester used Platform 2, a west-facing inset bay. Swindon Town Railway Station was on the Midland and South Western Junction Railway and sited in the Old Town area about one and a half miles from the Great Western Railway Swindon Junction. Swindon Town was originally planned under an Act of 1873 for a different site to the east of the eventual station with a tunnel to be built under the hill on which the Old Town sits. But money ran out and the line was realigned to run south of the hill. The Swindon Marlborough and Andover Railway opened between Swindon Town and Marlborough on the 27th of July 1881. In early 1882, the line was extended northwards from Swindon Town to a junction with the Great Western Main Line at Rushy Platt, and services were started between the two Swindon stations. Services between the two Swindon stations ceased in 1885 because of the high charges the GWR imposed on the MNSWJR. Swindon Town was seen as the most important station on the line and housed the M and S W J R's offices. There was a loop line, a locomotive turntable and a loco shed at the site. The loop line platform was used for the shuttle services to Swindon's GWR station when these were reinstated following the takeover of the M and S W J R by the GWR at the grouping in 1923. Swindon Town Station was heavily used in early years, but increasingly suffered from the concentration of traffic at the main GWR station, as the focus of the town shifted away from the old town area to the newer parts that developed around the GWR station and the railway works there. Passenger and goods traffic on the MNS WJR fell very steeply after the Second World War, and the line closed to passengers in 1961. Goods facilities were redrawn in 1966, although freight trains conveying materials for the construction of the M4 motorway continued until 1972, when the track was abandoned. The track was lifted around 1978. The MNS WJR offices remain on the site but much of the rest has disappeared under a trading estate. Part of the track alignment or town railway cutting has been opened as a railway path and nature trail. Well, I hope you've enjoyed all that. Um, in the next part, we're going to look at the other stations, most of the other stations, which uh, were around Swindon. Uh, stations such as Highworth, such as Wooten Bassett and uh, Stratton Holt. Um, so that will be um, hopefully next month 
or perhaps in June. Uh, so that those stations are all defunct now. So I uh, hope uh, you'll join me for that. And uh, thank you very much for staying with me. Don't forget to do all the usual YouTube stuff, such as the liking, commenting, and if you don't subscribe, please do so. That means you won't miss out on any of my wonderful videos. So that's it for now, and um, before I forget, uh, take care and see you soon. Bye.